John 16.33 says, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. Jesus says this to the disciples in John 16.33 because he wants his disciples to know that the true born-again believer, their life is not going to be filled with continual prosperity. There's many prosperity preachers out there that basically say, come to God and you will be rich, which is just absolute foolishness. Basically, we're coming to God for the sole purpose of money based upon their viewpoint, and yet God tells us to have no other idols before Him. And if we go to God simply for money, well, money is our God. And there's no rich gospel, there's no poor gospel. Those who are rich have a responsibility to do right and to help others with it. Those who are poor, they don't need to um, be concerned with monetary things because eventually everything is passing. What matters is the peace that is found in Christ alone. And that peace supernaturally ascends beyond, beyond all human intellect. We can be in the midst of the worst suffering and yet have a supernatural peace within us because Him who is peace dwells within us. And I have known many born-again believers. My papa, he suffered from um, MS for 30 plus years now. And yet every time I see him, he is in high spirits and he's at peace. Even though he's not even able to brush his teeth on his own. I know other people who have had uh, mentally handicapped uh, diseases, they have maybe were born without certain limbs, and yet God has given them a supernatural peace to those who have sought the Lord and truly become born again. And the Lord wants to do this with everyone, but He gives us the freedom to choose. And any Christian life that does not have suffering or tribulation is not a genuine Christian life because if your Christian life is all about happy 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 prosperity then it's not truly the Christian walk because we look at the Lord Jesus Christ and as he went throughout this life yes the Father did provide for him yes he had um, abundance in life he was the God man but he also had trials and tribulation people were out to kill him the Pharisees hated him Judas betrayed him he was hungry at times. He went through sufferings beyond human comprehension when he went to the cross to die for our sins and even the hours leading up to that. Christian life, a true Christian life, involves suffering. This is promised and guaranteed. It even happened with the martyrs after Christ arose and we look at Peter who was crucified upside down. Um, we just look at true born-again believers, and each one has a suffering of their own. The suffering may not be the same level in this life in comparison to Peter being crucified upside down, and then maybe someone dies from cancer nowadays who was born again, or maybe um, there is an abusive family member that is abusive to the kids and, and to, to the family. Whatever the suffering is, Christ can give us that supernatural peace in our times of need. He can give us peace in the midst of suffering. And that is the beautiful thing about the Holy Spirit living within us. Every other religion is all either uh, works-based or there's no guarantee of salvation. It's, it's just do, a good, do enough good things and hopefully you'll get in. But we are saved as born-again believers solely through the blood of Jesus Christ. And when we receive the Holy Spirit, we have the same Spirit that awoke and arose Jesus Christ from the dead inside of us. We have that same Spirit. It's the Spirit of God Almighty within us. And Christianity is the only religion where a man's God comes and lives inside of him. That quote is from Leonard, Leonard Ravenhill, and it's so true. Christianity is the only religion where a man's God comes to live inside of him. So may we tap in to that spirit within us. May we 
become friends with the Holy Spirit. May we speak to him throughout the day. May we ask for his guidance and counsel. He wants to be a friend to us. He is a gentleman within us, and he's not going to force himself um, within us to do what he wants. If, if our will wants to do our way, then we're going to miss out on what the Holy Spirit wanted to do. He's not going to overpower us with um, his will and his ways, even when he's living inside of us. That's why we have to constantly get to know him and befriend him and speak to him throughout the day and ask him for his guidance, counsel, and wisdom, and he will answer. And through all that, he will give us a supernatural peace because he will be the one who gives us an increased love for others. He will increase our wisdom so when we enter into circumstances, even that are unknown, we know that wisdom itself dwells within us. So in the midst of our sufferings, we can trust that Jesus Christ is there and that his supernatural peace is with us when we die to ourselves, when we die to sin, and when we choose to seek Him, we can believe that no matter what is to happen, God is willing and able to give us a peace that transcends all understanding.